Hello everyone, welcome back to the fabrication shop. This is going to be the start of a third series of videos dealing with the Olympus project. You may remember in the first series of videos we went through the construction of the rocket. In the second series of videos we went through the finishing and trim work that we did on the model. And now in series three we're going to look at the electronic payload and how we actually got to this point in the project. One of the things, especially with a project such as this, where it's not just a sport model, this is something that is going to be used for some type of mission. And when you have a project like that, one of the first things that you really need to do is sit down and write out the mission objectives. Because these objectives are going to be what helps determine the payload that you're going to carry. Is the payload going to do something? Is it carrying something? Is it testing something? Are we trying to get samples of something? All of those objectives, all those questions that need to be answered go into determining how exactly the payload is made as well as what type of launch vehicle that you're going to use. So we have to first off determine what our objectives are. Now, as we sit down and we start thinking about our objectives, one of the very first things we need to do is write them down. They need to be recorded somewhere. Don't depend on your memory to remember what your objectives are. Write them down. You could do this in a little notebook, a little three ring binder. You can do it in a word processing document like Word or LibreOffice Writer. Or you can use specialty software. Project management software will allow you to do it. The uh, screenshot that we've got up here on our slide shows the project's screen from the Rocketry Research Assistant that we're currently developing. And you can see down towards the middle of that screen, it has our objectives. And we've got these written down now. So as we go through developing the payload, we need to come back and make sure that our payload meets the objectives. And these objectives, especially if you're working as part of a team, they need to be formally approved. That way everybody knows these are what the objectives are. If you're working by yourself, it's not that big a deal. But once you decide either as an individual or as a group that these are our objectives, Typically, they don't change because if your objectives keep changing, you're never going to get to the end of the project. Once you have your list of objectives, the next thing you need to do is you need to sit down and prioritize them. You may have a lot of different objectives, different things that you want the project to accomplish. Some of your objectives you're absolutely going to need to accomplish. Other objectives, not so much. And so you can sit down and define these are the most important. If we look at our screen over here, we'll see that we've got several objectives listed as critical. These are the objectives that we absolutely need to get done. You can see that we've got an objective as to record acceleration, to record altitude, to record roll rate. All of those things we want to be accomplished with this project. You'll also notice that it has in there to use the APAM, the Arduino Primary Avionics Module, as the base component for this payload. So that gives us a starting point as well. The next thing we need to do is identify what's needed. The objectives help us determine what sensors, what type of systems we're going to need. Based on these critical objectives, we know that we need sensors that can report altitude, acceleration rates, roll rates, and we know that we're going to use the APAM. All of this comes out of our objectives. This is how we know the direction we're going to go in as we build our payload and as we build our rocket. Now that we know what our objectives are and what we're trying to accomplish, the next thing we need to do is select components that are going to help us meet those objectives. Now, we already said in the very beginning as one of our objectives, we are going to use the APAM. 
the APAM has three primary components. The primary processing unit is an Arduino Nano. It's small, it's lightweight, it fits easily within the body tube. We know we're going to need something to record the data from the sensors that we're going to use. And so for that, we're going to use a micro SD card. The other thing is we need to know if our payload is working properly or not. We can't hook up a USB cable to the Nano like we do when we're testing it on the ground. We can't do that out at the launch pad. So we need some other form. And since this does not have any type of radio communications with it, we're going to use a status lamp. And that's our little LED lamp. And we chose an RGB LED lamp so that way we can change colors. We can also change uh, flash sequences if we need to. This will give you an idea if the electronic payload is operating properly, if there's an issue, if there's something we need to correct to get the payload working properly. We can do that just by changing colors on the lamp or having the lamp flash in a certain pattern if we need to do it that way. With the APAM as our base, we can now start looking at designing the rest of the payload electronics. So we've already said we're going to use the APAM as our foundation. The APAM gives us the Nano, the SD card, and the status lamp. Now we've also said we're going to need a sensor that can measure altitude. So we need an altimeter. And for that, we're going to use the BMP-180 pressure sensor. We also know that we need an accelerometer and a gyroscope. That's how we're going to be able to test uh, the g-forces on the rocket, the roll rate of the rocket. And for that, we're going to use the MPU-6050 inertial measurement unit, or IMU. Uh, this particular one provides six degrees of freedom, and that will allow us to get the information that we need based on our objectives. So with the APAM as our base and two sensors, we have now got the basis for how we want to do our payload, as well as the sensors that we're going to use. So with this information and a basic design laid out, it's time to actually start building and testing the electronics. As we do our testing and building, we're actually going to switch things up a little bit. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to replace the Nano with the Uno during our development process. And we do this for several reasons. One, it's a larger form factor. It's easier to work with. It's got these nice headers on the top of it that make it easier to put our jumper wires in. It just accelerates the development on the breadboard, makes it a lot quicker and easier. Now, the nice thing about the Uno and the Nano is they both share the same pin arrangement and assignments. So whatever pins we use on the Uno, they transfer directly over to the Nano without any change. The last thing is the code also runs without any change. We can write our code, test it on the Uno, and we know that it will run on the Nano. So with everything designed out on paper, it's time to go ahead and move that over to the breadboard. The breadboard is used to test our designs. Uh, it allows us to make changes. Sometimes we find what we design on paper doesn't transfer to the real world as easily. Uh, we find that as we start actually hooking things up, there may be better ways of doing it than what we had originally designed. On the left-hand side is our Uno, and that small little breadboard on the right actually has all our sensors on it. So here's a close-up look of those sensors. The first one here is the MPU-6050, that's our IMU. Next to that is the BMP-180, that's our altimeter. Both the MPU-6050 and the BMP-180 use a protocol called I2C to talk to the Uno or the Nano. That's how data is passed back and forth. It's a two-channel communications setup. The first one is SDA, or Serial Data Channel. The outer, or red channel, 
we're using for SCL, which is the serial clock. So this allows us to connect both the MPU 6050, the BMP 180, and then it's only two wires that go to the UNO, and that allows it to send all that data between the different components. Here we see our micro SD card. Here is our status lamp. It's a five millimeter RGB LED. If you're familiar with RGB LEDs, you know there's actually three LEDs within the bulb one red, one green, one blue. And so for each one of those, you have to have a 220 ohm resistor. So this completes hooking everything up to our breadboard. With all our electronics set up on the breadboard, the last thing that we need to do is to go ahead and write and test the code that will be used to get the data from our sensors and from our processors. So we will discuss that in our next episode. So until then, wishing you all the best and take care.